guys, today we are going to talk about the top six things that Wizards of the Coast would rather have you forget about Magic the Gathering. Number six, we start off with Chronicles. Chronicles almost killed the game. When I meant almost, I really meant almost. By a tiny, tiny margin, it upset a massive amount of players. It upset pretty much, I would say, 90 to 95 percent of players were unhappy and it created a reserve list which we'll talk about a little later. So Chronicles as a set, probably the worst set of all time, but the set that has the most historical value in terms of what it does for Magic the Gathering. And since Chronicles, Wizards of the Coast has been extremely careful with reprints, extremely careful with the reserve list. They don't even talk about the reserve list. It's almost as it does as if it doesn't exist, which is crazy, crazy. But we're going to go on to number five. And number five is insane. So in most card games, or most games in general, you have a mana base or an energy base. Let's compare it to Pokemon. You have energy. Now, you can use special energy. You can use foil energy. But at the end of the day, everyone has pretty much the same energy. Not true of Magic the Gathering, not true of Legacy. There are lands, the best lands, dual lands, considerably better than other lands. Now, these lands can catch, you know, 100, 200, 300, and the beta versions and alpha versions, we're talking about four figures, 1,000 plus dollars for a very good copy. This was, in my opinion, a huge mistake on not to talk about the reserve list, but to talk about why lands were the, the thing. Like they're not planeswalkers, they're not creatures, they're not amazing spells and abilities, although you do have power nine and you have moxes. Lands. Why are these lands so expensive and why are they on the reserve list? Which brings us to a totally different issue. And it's JC Mind Sculptor. You might be like, oh, it's MTG Lion talking about how Jace is overpowered. No. At any time, Wizards of the Coast can ban a card. They can instant ban a card. They can ban Jace. They can ban Stoneforge Mystic. They can ban a Memory Jar. They can ban any card they want whenever they want. Yes, there is a release date where they normally make announcement. But, you know, if they want to, you can do emergency ban. Splinter Twin, you know, for all those people who spent a lot of money on Splinter Twin, goodbye. Goodbye all that money. For all the people who spent a lot of money on the Amulet Bloom deck, goodbye. Goodbye Amulet Bloom. So at any time, they can just ban a card, killing the value of the card. And Jace was the best example. He was over $100 and they, they banned him kind of out, out of the blue, if you will. And that is a pun intended. So I remember that vividly because I had a place of Jace. I was like, oh, this is bad. Next, Commander. They would love for you to forget that their money-making machine, which is Commander, was not actually made by anyone in the Wizards of the Coast team. It was developed by a group of judges who just liked playing for fun at tournaments. Wizards of the Coast piggybacked off that group of judges and their invention, which they called ED8. So ED8 is Elder Dragon Highlander, I believe. And... It was made around, I think, 2012, 2011, around that time period. Wizards of the Coast did not participate in its making, but they took it, renamed it Commander, because they couldn't rename it ED8, because then that would give respect to the people who actually made it. So this giant cash cow, which is Commander, which comes out every year, they had no part in designing the game. They had no part in designing the original ed and to be honest a lot of the cards spiked up a lot of in price because no one knew what was good and what was bad and that's why ed or now called commander was so fun it was organic it was driven solely by the players wizard of the coast took it and made it a money making machine so that's something they would love for you to forget now my number two is a personal favorite of mine the reserve list is insane. The reason it's insane, not because it's spiking prices. Yes, it does all that stuff. 
Some of the cards on the reserve list are just so bad. Temerian Fiend is on it. Homeland cards. Multiple Homeland cards are on the reserve list. It doesn't make any sense. Narwhals, a 2-2 for 4. Or first strike, protection from red, is on the reserve list. So when you talk about this list of expensive cards, and there are a lot of cards on that it's so obvious they really did not know what they were doing. And unfortunately, Lion's Eye Diamond was on it. And that's kind of sad because it wasn't actually good at the time and it spiked. Insane. Just insane. Take a look at some of the cards on the list and you won't believe it because it's just a random assortment of bad cards. The large majority of cards are extremely bad. So, but that does not compete. Nothing ever competes to number one. When I was growing up in middle school, elementary school, I went to a school in Exton. Um, it was in Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia, kind of next to Key Presser. I think Key Presser did have a Magic the Gathering store as well, but definitely the Exton Mall had one because that's where all my friends went. I lived like five minutes away from the Exton Mall. Now, the Wizard of Coast store never had anyone in it. And that was the odd part about it. I went to buy booster packs. I never played FNM there very often because there was no one to play with. You would play with your friends. You would open a box on a Friday night and it would be really fun. However, Wizard of the Coast had to close that store. And I believe they closed many, many other stores. So this is in Pennsylvania. From what I heard was they had a ton of stores on the West Coast. Um, and they opened the store. They had huge margins on the product but they couldn't move it they could not make a profitable business now think about that very carefully because wizard coast is trying to make you know put the onus or put the financial burden on these store owners when they themselves cannot manage a store to be profitable last i heard when they pulled out uh, from these wizards of the Coast official stores, they had a PR statement, but it really said that they were just bleeding money. Honestly, if they could open their own store and sell the product like hotcakes, they would do it because their margins are way higher and they have more control over the branding and the product and the play points. It would be much easier for them to do it. To my knowledge, every single store just bled money and that tells you about the situation with the current, your current local game store. They're probably not making hand over fist money because Wizards of the Coast couldn't make money on their own product. There you go. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.